let's just go straight to the college part of it. How was your first experience in college, first fall season, in the middle of a pandemic, you know, going to meet new teammates, you know, first time being under these coaches actually as I'm coaching. Why don't you talk a little bit about that experience? For sure. First semester was fantastic, you guys. I really loved the school that I went to. I really thought pretty hard about this decision making process. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but I loved Texas A&M. I loved playing there. It was tough with COVID. Um, definitely tough. A lot of other schools didn't get a season, so that was really tough for them. But being able to have one, I felt super blessed. Um, we got to play, and we played our SEC group. We played in the SEC tournament, which was huge. And it was such a great experience, you guys. The coaches were fantastic. I think it was a very similar experience coming from Legends. It's a very family-oriented group. So that was huge. I think you guys can probably um, say, I feel like you guys probably agree, like Legends is special. And I feel like when you're here, you really meet some important people. You meet some of your best friends. I don't know if you guys would agree, but I definitely would say that you meet some pretty special people here. Um, and I feel like having that translate over into college, going somewhere that was really similar and having the coaches here get me somewhere like that was super special and really made it an easy transition my freshman year, even despite all the COVID stuff. So that was great. I talked to her, um, you know, we're about sports, we're about you guys getting opportunities in college if that's your goals. Uh, but we're also, uh, what's very important to us is the academic side. And so uh, she was sharing with me what she's had to do at college, you know, during COVID and do the virtual process and, and and even she's always been a great student uh, as she was uh, here with us at high school and middle school but I just talked to her about maybe sharing some of the academic challenges she's had at college and even maybe some things maybe if she had to do it all over again uh, as she was kind of growing up um, that she could give some advice to you guys as far as the academic piece of it. For sure. Um, I think for me it's been it's been tough staying disciplined with online classes because sometimes like, I'll be sitting in my room, and I'm on class, and I'm like, well, man, I could just clean my room right now, or I could just listen to music right now, or do this. But I think really staying focused has been the most important thing for me. So being able to take the time to actually focus and stay in class, stay engaged in class has been huge for me. Um, and it's been tough having a season and having to play soccer and balance that on top of school. Like, that's been a challenge for me. But I think... One thing that's helped me has been making a schedule. So knowing when I'm going to do stuff, because if I don't have a schedule, then I'm like, well, I could just push this back. I could do this later. But if I have a schedule or like checklists, like those are so satisfying to just cross things off a checklist. I feel like that one's really nice. Just being able to like check things off. I feel like that's been huge for me. So just staying disciplined in that way. Um, something that I would do over, I think, I think paying attention in like certain classes like chemistry, chem's hard. Um, I know you guys will probably get into that more in high school. Chem is hard. Math in general is hard. I feel like just paying attention in math. Yeah, you're laughing in the back. You know math hard. <laughs> I feel like just paying attention um, in classes like that, making sure you're engaged. Even though stuff is virtual right now, I know that stinks, but staying engaged as much as you can really um, taking time to do like practice problems, stuff like that, it, it's huge. It's big time guys and it helps. So I'd say that. So um, all of you guys play uh, competitively. Um, I think most everybody now within Legends almost. Um, and so um, I guess maybe just share, walking through your journey. Like I said, you started here at, uh, you know, very young, five years old. Mm -hmm. You know, I know when, um, Matt used to coach, I think he had you as a sweeper. Yeah. I was like, no, put her at forward, she's fast, you know. Um, you know, talk, you did ODP, you did national team stuff, so just maybe talk a little bit about your soccer journey and, and again, things you learned along the way and, and any advice you have to pass on to them. For sure. Um, okay, so I officially started playing with Legends when I was in second grade, but my sister played for Legends when I was younger, so starting from like four to five years old, I was always out passing the soccer ball at their halftime. And it started because one of the dads, do you remember Zoe's dad? Yeah. Zoe's dad would always have a soccer ball, but we would always just pass the soccer ball at halftime. Um, 
and I really started to work on my foot skills there, and I told my parents that I wanted to play for Legends. Um, and so I went out to a little camp thing one day, and the coach there at the time was Chris Ramos, um, and I started playing for his team. And after that, I started playing for Matt Evans' team. So this was just developmental, like just starting with coaches and stuff like that. And Matt Evans really focused, I feel like, on technical ability. Um, so just foot skills, stuff like that. And I think it's crazy to me because so my first collegiate goal that I scored was with the Matt Evans soccer move. I beat a player down the line using a move that I picked up here when I specifically remember this in the third grade. I remember doing this foot skill over and over again and this is where I learned it and that ended up translating directly over to my collegiate career and I think that's something that's really special about Legends is that the stuff that you do here, it's you see it later on. You'll see it in people's collegiate careers. You'll see it like later on, girls that have gone and played professionally or guys that have gone and played professionally. It's all starting from their club career and what they did early on. Um, but specifically, Legends really focuses on technical ability and that's special. A lot of clubs don't do that. You know those teams that just play kickball? That's not pretty soccer. Legends isn't like that, and I think that's special. So I learned that early on, um, technical ability, stuff like that. And this got me into ODP camps. Um, this got me into ODP tryouts. And, man, I loved ODP. I met some of my best friends through ODP, playing there, um, won a couple of regional championships, made it to the national championships, and just had an overall fantastic time learning stuff there. And also, college coaches go and watch those games. And then same thing, I went to uh, ODP regional events in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, that was really cool. Different team, so it's more of your regional group instead of your state team, but still a great experience overall. Um, I also was called into some youth national team camps, and that was a really fun experience. And I feel like stuff like that, those camps, those environments that you push yourself to get into, that is what has probably helped prepare me almost the most for college and collegiate soccer because you're in those environments. And I feel like you guys doing this right now, being in an environment like this where you're training every day, it really helps prepare you for the next level. And I think that's really cool. Um, national championships with the club, that has been fantastic. The USC soccer ones. Uh, we won in 2015, we won a national championship in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that was, first goal. yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Oh my gosh, I had to run so far for that. It was off a corner <laughs> kick and then I ran the other direction. But um, that one, that was such a special game for me. Um, such a special time. And I feel like you really just get best friends from this team, from this club, from these experiences that you guys have. It's unreal. And I appreciate everything that this club has given to me because I really owe them everything. Being where I am now, like, Everything that I did when I was playing club soccer has led me to where I am right now, and I feel so blessed to be in the shoes that I am. So yeah. Well, well thank you. Uh, I think there was definitely um, on her development journey. There was there was obviously a lot of great moments, but there's also a scary time where, and I'll let her describe it better, uh, where, where there was a possibility that Laney wasn't going to be able to play again. And uh, you know, for a kid who loves the game so much and such a contributor to the team and in and, and the environment and, and just for her to have to go through that was painful for us to watch, let alone for her. So why don't you just kind of share kind of what happened and, and how you had to deal with it and overcome it and what you're dealing with now. Yeah. Um, so my, I'll take you guys back to the beginning. My sophomore year of high school, I woke up one morning at like five in the morning and couldn't move my body at all. And I was like terrified. I was like, I'm paralyzed. This, I don't know what's going on. And I screamed for my parents and they came in. Gradually movement came back in, but I was like terrified and I didn't know what had happened. Um, but I kind of just didn't think much about it. Like my, I started to feel a little bit better. Um, so I kind of just went on about my life. And it wasn't until a few months later, I remember this, we were on a soccer trip in North Carolina, um, and my back just started to hurt. Like, I felt like an old man. I couldn't turn my head. 
What do you mean old man? A really old man. <laughs> um, I just couldn't like move like I wanted to. I couldn't turn my head. So like if I wanted to look at you guys on the ends, I like really would have to like turn my whole body to like look in that direction, which was tough. Like in school, if a teacher's walking across, I couldn't even turn my head. Um, and so it wasn't until a few months later, it was like five months later, that I got diagnosed with an autoimmune um, issue called ankylosing spondylitis, which is... How do you spell that? How do you spell that? Shoot, I don't even know how to spell that. <laughs> it's um, basically this really rare type of like autoimmune arthritis, which... So my spine in my back was starting to fuse. So it was, instead of being like these things where you can like bend your back, it was starting to be like a stick um, where I wouldn't have been able to, like if it would have been left untreated, like my spine would be completely fused together. Like I would be pretty much immobile. Um, so I started getting treatment for that and it's not something like I still deal with it. It's not something that's curable, but it's treatable. Um, I was out for a year, you guys, over a year, um, and it was tough. I started having to take, and I'm still taking, and will still have to take, low doses of chemotherapy. Um, I do these shots, because, like the Humera commercials, where it's like the older people on the commercials, that's me, I take those. Um, I have to give myself a shot for that. Um, but I was told that I was never gonna play a soccer game again without pain. I was told that I was never gonna have a practice without pain. And I was like, well, forget that. I'm gonna work my butt off to get back to where I wanted. And guys, to be honest with you, I felt like before I got injured, I was starting to get burned out. I was starting to be like, I'm tired. I feel like I'm not playing for myself. I'm playing for other people. I don't know how I'm feeling about soccer. And then I got injured and I was like, whoa, like I, no one's gonna tell me that I can't play soccer again because like, this is part of who I am. And soccer to me meant so much that I was like, I'm gonna work my butt off to get back to where I was and to get to be better than to where I was. Um, and so I just started working. So as soon as I could, I started taking the treatment that I needed to do. I started, which is weird, but diet was a huge thing for me that I had to work on because foods are like inflammatory and I didn't know that. So it was a big learning curve for me. Um, but I had to start watching what I was eating like a ton. And ultimately I was able to get back to a place where I could practice again. And then I could play in games for like five to 10 minutes again. And then I was playing in games 45 minutes and then I was playing 90 minutes and I just worked my way back up. And yes, there were moments where it was bad and my back would lock up again and I would be in pain and worried, but guys, having the question as to whether I would ever be able to play soccer again really made me work to, like, it was something that was so inspirational for me because I was like, I'm gonna get through this. Like, this is, this is for me to be able to be as happy as I can be because I wanted to play soccer. Like, soccer means that much and I feel like Sometimes we don't recognize that until it's taken away. Um, but it's huge and it's an outlet for me. Like it's something that I'm like, man, school is just bugging me today. I don't want to do this. And you go out, play soccer, and then you're 10 times happier. You know, I feel like for me, it's just an outlet like that. And so it was huge to me when it was, hey, I might not get to play again. So being able to come back from that and then being able to go and play collegiately after that has been huge as well. Like being able to do that despite how difficult this was. Huge. Yeah, it's, 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 it was a very scary time, but it's a great story to see. If she had a choice to not fight and not play soccer again, that probably would have been the easier route. And she she embraced the challenge. That was probably one of the difficult, most difficult situations I've seen in 20 years at our club. And, and that just, again, kind of goes back to her character and her you know her desire and, and and the type of person she is so thank you for sharing that with us sure. laney could have gone to every any university she wanted in, in the country um recruited by everybody um you know good grades good student good teammate you know good athlete good soccer player um she went through the process uh she made a selection that um 
uh, at Texas A&M. Um, again, having the opportunity to go wherever she wanted to go. Uh, maybe you could kind of speak to how you went through that process and, and um, how you came to your decision um, to do that. And I would, before she talks, I would just say that you guys that are certainly in eighth grade, you know, dur during middle school, you should be thinking about college, looking at colleges, exploring kind of, you know, ideas about college. And then as every year it gets older, eighth grade, you should start to be kind of going to games and watching them. And then you should start to be taking visits, not even if the coach is asking to. So there's this whole process that we go through at Legends to help get kids placed into college or to support their placement. And, and so she went through this process uh, just like you will. Um, and she was in a great position to kind of go wherever she wanted to go. So I think her sharing to you how she decided Texas and m over all the other schools, I think would be good. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, you guys, I, this was a process. I looked at a lot of schools um, and I really broke it down. I was really picky. I was meticulous about where I wanted to go um, to a point where I think my coaches were like, just make a decision already. Like you really need to pick somewhere. Um, but I looked at a ton of schools, you guys, and there were so many different factors. I know that you guys are young right now, but just starting to think about stuff like, okay, what state do I want to be in? Or what region of the country do I want to be in? Like, do I like cold weather? Do I like hot weather? Because for me, Texas is very hot. Um, and it's, it's decisions like that, like little things, but it's also like, okay, this school has really good academics. Or, okay, this school has a really good program that I like here, I really like the coaches. But I think ultimately you want kind of the best package. You want a school that has good academics. You want a school where you like the team. Because um, I've had some friends that have gone to schools where they haven't really meshed with some of their team members and it's been more difficult for them. Um, or a school where you have good coaches. You guys, I love my coaches at Texas A&M and I feel like really taking the time to get to know the people that you're talking to and that are recruiting you, um, that one's huge. I love my coaches so I feel like that's a huge one um, other than that like there are just tons of different aspects that go into it um, legends helps a ton with it we I could not have picked where I wanted to go if it were not for my coaches and the constant phone calls where I was on with Josh annoying him about hey I don't know if I like this I don't know what I'm feeling about this but visits help a ton that's how you really get to know the coaches, you get to know the school, you get to know the environment and the atmosphere that you're looking at. Because um, for me, I was really like, it, it was funny, when I, the first two schools that I looked at, my first two visits were UCLA and USC. And I had it in my head, I was like, I don't like UCLA at all, I love USC, I think I could end up committing to USC. My very first visit was USC, and I got back in the car, and I was like, I do not like USC. I don't like it at all. Um, but then I went to UCLA, which I thought I didn't like at all, and I loved it. I loved almost everything about it. almost ended up going to UCLA. Um, so visits change your mindset a lot. You get to learn a lot more than you ever think that you would um, without them. I think getting into contact early with coaches, so like, I know this is early for you guys, but just to think for the future, like sending out emails and I even have like old drafts and stuff that I can forward to the coaches of like email drafts of like, hey, this is what I want to say. Hi, my name is so and so. I play for legends. I'm interested in your school. I could even forward those here. Um, but just things to start thinking about sending out those emails being in contact with coaches, it's it helps so much, guys. And it's just, it helps to get your name out there by letting a coach know that you're interested in a school. So I just think, I know it's early, again, but it's nice to start thinking about it. And I think, I hope that if y'all wanna play collegiately, that y'all would start to like, think about that. It helps. You see that y'all was from Texas already? Um, have you determined a major yet or anything? Um, okay, so going back to academics, so I, went in my first semester as an engineering major. I, I'm big into school, guys. Um, my, I loved calc, I loved math in high school, and I liked building things. So I was like, I'm gonna be an engineer. This is what I'm gonna do. And then I got to my first semester. Have you guys heard of coding? Yeah. 
I know I figured y'all would. I'm having to code and I had never coded before. Um, and so that for me kind of changed my mindset and maybe y'all like coding, maybe y'all should be engineers, but I coding did not click for me. Um, and so I decided to switch majors, but it wasn't like the cool thing for me, the thing that resonated well with me was I was not giving up engineering like because it got hard. That was not the case. Like I did really well in my other classes, like calculus, chemistry, like I did well in those classes. I mean, I actually did well in my coding class, but it was just, man, like really taking the decision to be like, okay, I don't know if this is exactly what I want to do. So I think also taking the time, again, I know it's early, but I really had to take the time to think about like, okay, what am I passionate about? And if this isn't it, maybe I can go another route and that's gonna be totally fine. Um, so for this next semester, I am actually transitioning towards a major, um, it's called Allied Health. And so it'd be like physical therapy or occupational therapy, which is sort of similar to that, but for more like extreme cases. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now, but I also want you guys to like take from this that it's okay to not know exactly what you want to do in college. It's okay to get there and to start something and think you're going to be all in for that and then go one, completely 180 and be like, okay, I, I want to do something else. Like it is okay to do that. You guys are absolutely allowed to do that. And I think that's a big piece of advice that's been important for me thus far. I'll do one more and then I'll uh, let you guys uh, ask any questions you want, but you mentioned mindset a, a, a bunch of times during your, your talk so far. Mm -hmm. That's something we talk about here at the Academy as a mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, you were always motivated. You, you, we never had to tell you to work harder. Um, you were always coachable. Those things that are important part of mindset. So what, what would you attribute that to or how, do you, how could, you, could you explain how you, you know, came to practice what your mindset was or for games or you know just address kind of the mindset piece of it okay um this is first and foremost for me i say this to anyone who wants to play soccer beyond club um or even at club if you're just having a hard time soccer is fun you guys i think sometimes when soccer gets hard we forget that and so I think the biggest piece for me has been going, soccer is fun and I love this game. So I'm going to give everything that I have right now. Okay, soccer is its most fun when you're doing good. Do you guys agree to that, with that? Like soccer is good, soccer is fun when you are juking someone out, when you meg the heck out of someone, when you score a banger, like that's when you're like, soccer is fun. So I feel like for me, it's a huge motivator to be like, I wanna go out and I wanna have fun. I'm gonna go work my butt off so that I can go have a good time. Because at the end of the day, I love soccer. So you wanna put everything out there on the field. You want to, every single time you step on, like you know when you step off the field, you come off, you just finished a game and you're like, man, I could have done more. Like that stinks, right? To be like, to have lost a game and be like, I think I could have given a little more. Like that's not a good feeling to have. So I feel like really taking the time to be like, I am going to give my all today. I am going to have my teammates' backs because they have mine. That's a huge thing for me too, is like the people around you, you wanna do good for them too because they're in the same boat that you are. You want to work hard for the person next to you. You wanna work hard for your coaches, but at the end of the day, work for yourself. Remember that soccer is fun and remember why you love the game because it's it's beautiful. Like soccer is great to play, you guys. It's fun. And when you make someone like that's that's fun. When you score, that's fun, you know? Um, so just come out with that mentality. Like I love this game and I'm going to go out there and give everything that I have. I think that one's the biggest piece for me. Just being able to focus up before a game. Um, like that's huge. Yeah. Cool, so I think, um, I know some of you guys may have prepared some questions or whatever, so we'll kind of uh, open it up for questions for you guys, and then maybe if you have some, some comments at the end after they ask their questions, we can uh, go from there. So who would like to go first? What's up? Um, is there like, anyone on your team that like, tries like, to get your position? Like, that tries to what? Is there like, anyone on your team that, like, like, that you don't like or that doesn't like you because like, you took the position? Oh, okay. Um, 
honestly no, which has been huge. I know that that's the case at some schools, um, but it hasn't been at mine. I think the cool thing about Texas A&M and about a lot of collegiate like experiences that people have is that you want your team to be the best that it can possibly be. So you want to win. And if someone else is going to be playing in front of me because we're going to win, then I'm going to support that, but I'm also going to work as hard as I possibly can to get that spot back. Um, but no, there's no one that's been like super ticked off about like me having this spot. That's a good question. I like that. Yeah. Why do you choose Texas A&M over UCLA? Ooh, um, so A&M was a full package. Um, so I also, like, I looked at a lot of schools. Um, I looked at UCLA, I looked at Stanford, Pepperdine, all these different schools. Um, and ultimately, A&M was a package deal, you guys. Like, between the coaches, the team, um, we take private jets to all of our games. What? Other teams don't do that. Um, we get our own, like, the living situation there. Um, okay, the reason why... So you, this so, is just because of the private jets? <laughs> that's it. We also have a disco ball in our locker room, so that one's fun. Um, but, like, the living there, the living situation, so at other schools, UCLA, your Stanford, you have dorms. I have my own bedroom, I have my own bathroom, I live in an apartment with three other girls off campus. It's super nice. Like, we have our own kitchen and everything. That's really nice. Um, there were so many different little pieces. I wanted a big football school. A&M is, I'm gonna hype us up, we're currently the fifth team in the country right now for football. Mm -hmm. um, like, it's just, it's fun. It was, it was a really good overall package. I think everything about it just really stood out to me. Um, and also I have family in Texas, that was a big pull. Um, Soccer was just a huge one. The coaches, oh, this is another thing. The coaches at A&M, it wasn't a thing where I was gonna get to college and be done with my development. Like, I wasn't gonna get to college and stop getting better. Like, I wasn't going to get there and they're gonna be like, we don't care about you, you figure out how to improve your soccer game. Instead, I got there and like the very first day we are out there grow I feel like I've already seen myself grow so much as a player since I've got there I've definitely been able to translate over all my abilities that I've gotten from legends but I feel like I've just been able to add on to them um, and that's something where I feel like at other schools maybe that wasn't going to be the case so good question what's up is there any more advice you'd give to us when playing college oh yeah um hmm let me think um, that's a good question. Definitely remembering, going back to what I was saying, remember soccer's fun. Um, remember why you play. Uh, play for yourself at the end of the day. Like, if you're trying to just impress other people, it's just gonna get tiring and it's gonna get hard. So if you're just like, okay, I'm just playing to make so-and-so happy or something like that, just focus back, remember why you play at the end of the day. Um, I also think this is a very key piece of advice that I got from um, a U.S. youth national team camp that I am always going to remember. Um, a coach there once told me that the best way to mentally prepare for a stressful situation so whether this be a, a like stressful game, a stressful camp, um, is to physically prepare for it as best as you can. So, and I know that's not always possible because sometimes you're injured, but that means being fit, um, which I know we don't like conditioning, but it helps. And there are fun ways to do it, you guys. So that means being fit. That means, let's say you wanna take that PK and you wanna make it perfect, take those repetitions, hit that PK a hundred times, um, if you want to take a free kick and you want to hit an upper 90 shot, take that kick, practice that. Um, if you want to juke someone out, like practice those moves. Just get that repetition in because it pays off at the end of the day. And you didn't ask me, but I'll add um, that, that basically like you, when you're playing and people are, you never know who's watching. Yeah. Uh, you never know if, if, if this coach is there, or that coach is there, or this scout's there, or that coach, scout's there. So. I think even the time, you know, I think Texas A&M really focused in on her 
uh, was at even our national championship event. I don't even know if she knew they were there. Yeah. She just had to do the thing she was always doing mm -hmm. and, and assume that somebody's always watching. Yeah. And I think that's something that, that I would say to everybody when you get in that opportunity. And just to add to that real quick, the one time that I, like when I first started really talking to the Stanford coach, I didn't even know that he was watching me play in the game that I started really getting recruited by Stanford. So you never know. What was your worst injury like on the field? Um, so this, ooh, I can think, ooh, I can think of two right now that I'll give you. One of them, um, we had just come back from winning the national championship in Oklahoma, and I came back the next weekend, and I was still playing up. I went to Surf Cup with that team, and I got slide tackled and tore a ligament in my ankle. I was out for a little bit with a long time actually with that um, but then so actually this past semester I mean I don't know if I would say this is worse but it's been it's been tough so this past semester I was okay in practice um, we play this game which I love it's called game of consequences which sounds scary um, because losers run but it is so fun it's just these small-sided scrimmages um, and it is so competitive, you guys, and it is so much fun. But we are playing Game of Consequences. I juke this one girl out, and I'm running down the line, and she tackled me, and I just hit the ground kind of weird, and I ended up um, partially tearing my MCL in my knee. Um, and so I missed three out of the eight games in our season, um, which was, I mean, I guess it ended up being ten, but I missed three games. And that was hard for me to like see my friends keep playing and to see like them doing great. Like that was really tough. But working back from that, like we have so many, you have so many resources like playing collegiately. There are so many resources for you if you get hurt or anything like that. Um, so I was going in for treatment every single day and doing diff all sorts of things to get me back to playing on the field. What's up? Okay, I'm superstitious. So there are a few things that I have to do before games. I don't know if they're necessarily like rituals, but I just have to do them. I have to put my right shin guard, right cleat on first. I don't know why. I use two hair ties. And before every single game, I crack all the knuckles in my left hand, all the knuckles in my right hand, lace my left shoe, lace my right shoe, and then I jump. I don't know why, but I have to do it, you guys. That's that's my what's up? Has confidence been a big thing for you? Confidence? For sure. Um how do you like do you mean collegiately or like in club or whenever? Like whenever. Okay, um, for sure. I feel like playing with confidence. It definitely has. That's a really good question. Because um, sometimes you have those games where you're just really not feeling it. And you're just not feeling like you're playing like yourself. Um, and, you know, when you get into those times when you're like, man, I'm just kind of in a rut right now. I just feel like I'm not playing that well. And I feel like it's just overcoming those. So for me, when I hurt my knee this past semester, um, I feel like it's just having a couple good moments or one good moment. Um, so when I hurt my knee, my first like real game back, we played Alabama at Alabama. And the first minute, the first couple of seconds of the game, Alabama had the kickoff and I picked it off of their center mid um, and started dribbling at them. We ended up getting a corner kick and we scored off the corner. And it was just like that moment of, okay, I can do the simple things right. Like I can do my job. Like I felt like I wasn't doing that well because of my knee like in practice I felt like I wasn't playing like myself and that was hard on my confidence um so I feel like it's just going back to the basics so for me when I'm having a tough time with confidence I focus like we were told to do this by we have a sports psychologist on our soccer team there and he told us that when you feel like you just are lacking that confidence to go back, pick three things that you know that you do well pretty much all the time. So I feel like for me, I'm like, okay, I can run fast. 
And it's like, okay, I can finish pretty well. And then it's like, okay, I can do pretty decently in one on like 1v1s, taking on defenders. So it's just getting back to the basics. So like, let's say for a center midfielder, it's like, wow, okay, I'm good at winning tackles. Or for a defender, it's, well, I'm really good at shutting down forwards. It's just remembering those little things and then doing really well and excelling in those things. This way you can expand and focus on the rest of your game. So I feel like that's been huge for me. Anybody else? Did you say everybody has to ask one, Andy? They all wrote down two questions. <laughs> we know you got them. I mean, I asked you a lot of questions, yeah. Kayla, any questions? Why did you choose number 15? Ooh, so this one was actually, so when I was little, um, I picked number 15. I had the option between 15 and 16 when I was little. But then collegiately, they gave me the option, and I actually picked it because of Matt Hodges. So, so you guys, a lot of you guys don't know me, maybe that well, uh, and I had it written down kind of towards the end. But um, you know, I, I lost my brother uh, Matt Hodges in a car accident a few years ago, and uh, him and I both wore the number 15. Um, and uh, and so, you know, I didn't necessarily know that story of why she picked that, but what she did do is right after her first game, uh, send me a text with my brother's initials and and her number and our number on it and and, and tell me that she played played for my brother and and so you know again like she didn't have to do that a lot of people and they go off to college and they they they, they were thankful for what they were a part of but we preach family a lot and and that that to me was like you know we're in a we're in a pandemic everything's crazy this is tough it's been a lot of hard stuff and somebody took the time out of their their they played for a, a, my brother they took the time to let me know that, which I would have never known. And and I just think that kind of, hopefully that's another example. And if you can't feel it from her her presentation up here, like she, she's more than just a soccer player. And it's, it, she's, she's a, a, a holistic person that, you know, focuses on academics, focuses on being a good teammate. Um, and, and I think that's a reason why she has success. It's not just because she's talented, it's because of the whole package, like she said, for Texas A&M. So that's, I'm glad you asked that because I, I wanted to share that and uh, it, it certainly meant a lot to me, Lainey, that, that you did that and you chose that number. So. Definitely. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Yeah. Uh-oh. I know, I just caused a rift here. Uh, I'll go here first. What's your schedule like? Schedule. Um, so it is pretty busy. Um, guys, it, it's so fun though. It is so fun. Um, so. For me, like during the school year, so typically I would have classes in the morning. Um, our team practiced at 1.30 during season. Um, we would have, during season we would only lift like once or twice a week. So on some of those days we would lift right after. Okay, so let's say I wake up, go to classes, um, I'd get breakfast and lunch somewhere, somewhere in between there. Then I'd typically go to treatment if I needed that, like for my knee, I would go get stuff for my knee. Then I'd go right to practice. If we had a lift after, I would go there. If we didn't, I would go home, shower, maybe I have classes in the afternoon, maybe I don't. And if I don't have classes in the afternoon, I'd pretty much just work on homework, hang out with my roommates. Um, it's kind of tough. We couldn't really hang out with a lot of people because we were pretty much in a bubble um, just for soccer season but I'd hang out with my roommates or my teammates, do some homework, um, relax a little bit. It was fun, guys. It's a good time. Did you like how much? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. How much free time did you really get? Um, there were actually, there were times when I had free time. Like, I had quite a bit of free time. Um, my first semester being an engineering major, not as much as my roommates did, um, but you definitely, as long as you're on top of schoolwork and stuff like that, you have free time, and it's fun. Did you ever do homework with your roommates? I did. It was really fun. We'd go to like coffee shops, or they have pretty cool like um, buildings on campus where you can go study. That's pretty nice. Um, that was something that I love to do in free time. I feel like I study really well outside of the house. Um, so going to go do work at like a coffee shop or something like that, and going back to your free time question, like fun stuff that we would do. There were lakes nearby. We'd go swim there. We had a really cool rooftop pool at my apartment complex. Stuff like that. Super fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Did you have something? Oh, sorry. Okay. Has there been any coach that like disliked you? Has there been a coach that's disliked me? Probably. <laughs> probably. A little negative mindset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Um, probably. I can't think of one off the top I don't, of my head. I'll, I'll answer for it. It's not possible not to like Lainey. Like, like everybody likes her. Your teammates like her. Oh, coaches God. like her. You know, like it's just not possible not to like her. They're a really bad person if they don't. He's just hyping me up. I don't know about that. There's probably been one. Go ahead. Um, how big of an impact is the high school you choose having your collegiate career? The high school that I chose? Um, okay, S because, uh, mm, so in high school, I feel like I developed my study habits, um, and because of that, I feel like that's been huge collegiately, um, and that really made me want an emphasis on academics for wherever I ended up, um, but, I mean, it's definitely important. You want to be somewhere that's going to prepare you for it. Um, but I think you're honestly like, go. you could go wherever and as long as you make the most of your situation in high school, if you're studying well, if you're focusing on school, if you're focusing on soccer and are focusing on the things that are important, um, you're gonna thrive wherever you are and you're gonna end up at a great college no matter what, as long as you're putting in the work. Do you have a favorite soccer moment? Favorite soccer moment. Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. My first, I liked, honestly, the first goal against Old Miss, my first goal that I scored in college was, that one felt pretty good. Old Miss, <laughs> That was funny. He told me about that. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool. Except my calves cramped right after. But other than that. So the trainer had to come get you? No, he didn't have to get me. It wasn't that bad. I was, I was fine after that. I got rid of it. But I initially was like, oh my gosh. But yes, that was a pretty big one. Anything else that I missed or that they Did missed? Did you play in any other sport other than soccer? Um, not competitively, but I've always been super duper like competitive and athletic. So I would play volleyball with my friends all the time. I, we would play street basketball. Um, I'm not very good at street basketball or basketball in general. Um, We'd play, I liked racing people. I would always just race people. Um, never was able to do track, but I wish I could have. I did cross country in middle school, actually. That was fun. That's about it. Did you do powder puff? I did do powder puff. <laughs> oh, I crushed powder puff, you guys. That was, uh, that's the like football. Have you guys heard of that? Do you guys know what that yeah, is? No. Okay, for those of you that don't know what it is, at least for my high school, some schools do it differently, but it's our junior class and the senior class in high school. The girls play football, like flag football against each other. You guys, it was so fun. It Who was won? great. Okay, we lost our my junior year. We didn't get to have it my senior year, which I was really upset about, but I scored all five touchdowns that were made in that game, so it was fine. Um, there was a question over here. No? Anything? Uh, Two-part question. Oh, okay. Okay. And you had to write it down? Yeah. So I can forget it. <laughs> so intriguing. So weird. Okay, so when you were playing club, how many times a week would you guys train? Four. Four? Okay. Mm -hmm. With that schedule, how many extra sessions would you do during a week? And what do you recommend for them at their age? How many times should they be training a week? Ooh. Okay. Um, I definitely did extra stuff on my own. Um, so typically, let's say... I had some extra time in a day um, and I didn't have as much homework. Again, school was really important for me so I made sure that I was getting my homework done so that I could train and play soccer because I wanted to be at the top of my game. Um, so typically, let's say after school I have free time, maybe two other times a week I would go out kick a ball on my own. I was very lucky. Um, I had a lot of guy friends that ended up playing collegiate soccer and we would go out we would play soccer sometimes after school. Um, so I'd say on top of those trainings, I would probably do, and definitely on weekends too, um, like if I didn't have a game, I was probably training four more times on top of that. And I mean, not all of them were as intense as the practices that we're doing here. Um, but I think going to camps like that, we're training twice a day. 
um, going to college, my first couple time, like my first couple days in preseason, we were training twice a day. Um, so I think it's there's not so much a set number. It's just what is going to prepare your body for that next level. So what's going to get you to that level of fitness for that next level? If you want to play collegiate soccer, if you want to go play pro, ultimately, like you're going to be training a lot and your body's going to be pushed. Um, so I think just preparing yourself for that with the amount of training that you're doing. Second part is when you did do extra training on your own, how did you know what to work on? Ooh. Um, okay, I feel like taking drills that you learn here um, and really applying them to your individual practices. Um, I always loved just doing stuff with a wall. Like if no one was gonna go kick a soccer ball with me, like if I asked my dad and he was like, heck no, I'm not gonna go play soccer with you right now, I have work. I would grab a wall and just go pass to myself. Um, don't do that in the kitchen. You're, you, you might get in trouble. Or if you do it, tell them we didn't tell you to do that. Exactly, you didn't hear this from me. Um, grab a wall, preferably outside. Go kick a soccer ball against it. There's so many ways that you guys can get creative playing soccer. Like you don't need cones. You can get, literally grab a sweatshirt, throw it on the ground, juke out a sweatshirt. Um, work on these moves that you guys are learning. Like here, like scissors, soul overs, step overs, stuff like that. Just keep practicing those. Um, for me, I always just love to shoot. I'm, I'm a forward. I like to shoot. Um, and it, it translates over you guys. If you practice your shots, if you practice those one-on-ones, it, it shows in games. So I feel like working on those are huge. Um, but also just taking drills that you learn from here, passing drills. If you guys have some friends that'll come out and play with you, I know we're in a global pandemic and that's kind of hard, but passing drills are huge, especially during um, like while you have to like social distance and stuff, you guys can stay spaced out and can kick a soccer ball around in a diamond and just get those touches in. I think that's huge. Okay, last part is Josh mentioned that we never had to ask you to work really hard, whether it was a game or training. I wish all my players were like that, but some of them aren't. Uh, most of these kids here are really good about giving effort, but there's some days where like, oh, I don't feel like I'm tired. So what do you do on those days? What's your secret to always come okay. out with max effort? So attitude is one of those things that you can always control, you guys. Um, I think it's really cool in college, we have to do this thing after all of our practices, we have some categories and we will rank our practices. And three of the things, so it's effort, attitude, energy, and performance. And I think three of those, the first three are always like in your court. The ball is always in your court. You can always control those. The effort, energy, and attitude, you can always change that. Like if you are having a tough day, you're low energy, your attitude just isn't there. You guys can change that. Like you guys can switch that around. You guys can make it a better day. And I think knowing that that's in, in control, like you have the ability to do that within yourself is something that's been really important for me. Going like, okay, I am having a tough time do, like playing right now, but let's say my performance isn't where I want it to be at. I know that I can change my energy levels, I can change my attitude, and I can try and get it moving in the right direction. So I think just knowing that it is in your control that you guys have that ability within you. Um, and then knowing that it's going to make it that much better because you're gonna be doing well, I think that's really rewarding in itself. What was the energy, effort, attitude? Um, energy, effort, attitude, performance. And we just rank that out of three. So it's either a one, two, or a three for the day. It's a good one though. We look at it at the end of the week too and it's cool because in our games, you see how it like shows up in your games. So let's say we played really well one week. We can look back at our rankings and be like, well, shoot, yeah, we played well. Like we had really high attitude levels. We had really high energy levels. Our performance continued to get better throughout the week. Like you can look back and see that, but you can also go back and be like, well, man, we didn't play that well. Well, maybe it's because our attitude was low on these few days. Like maybe it's because our energy wasn't where we wanted it to be or we weren't putting in the effort. So we weren't performing that well. So you can really see it. It like is super reflective of how you end up playing in games. Kind of cool.
you guys rank it individually or as a team? As a team. Okay. So it's normally just a unit, we'll bring it in and then one of our captains will be like, all right, let's rank training and we'll go energy. And people will just kind of be like, I think it's this because of this and we'll all just kind of agree upon that. Yeah, pretty neat. Well, can we give Lainey a round of applause?